Well, hi, welcome to Chess Base Workshop. My name is Steve Lopez. Thanks for clicking on that link and joining us for another workshop. Last time around, we talked about uh, Ribka's Monte Carlo analysis and how it can take a position and analyze it. This is the precursor to Monte Carlo analysis. As we saw last time around, what Monte Carlo analysis does is have Ribka play a whole bunch of games against itself from a given position and give you a statistical breakdown of whites wins, black wins, draws, and then make a tree out of the results of or out of the moves that were played in all of those games. This is the precursor to that. This is from uh, from Fritz going way back. And it's called the shootout. And by the way, in response to the emails and message board posts and everything else, how do you get Fritz to play a game against itself? This is how you do it. The feature is called shootout. It's actually one of my favorite Fritz features, has been for a long time. We're going to look at the same position we looked at last week from that Frank Marshall book where it says, and black should win after um, 12 rook d6. As you see right here, the highlighted move, Rook D6, Marshall's comment was black should win. Last week we used Monte Carlo analysis to play a whole bunch of games and make a tree out of it. This time around we're going to have Fritz play a whole bunch of games against itself. And what it does in shootout mode is it plays a whole bunch of games, and instead of making a tree out of them, it just saves the games into a database. So you can sit down and play through all the games individually. And if you wish, later, if you take the additional step, you can take those games and make a tree out of those games yourself, if you wish. Let me show you how to get this thing going. First, go to the Analysis menu at the top in Fritz, and you will see a command that says Shootout. It says Play a Computer Match from the Current Position. So click Shootout, and we get this dialog. Now, very simple. First of all, you have participants. Uh, you can have an engine play a whole bunch of games against itself, and if you add an, another engine by clicking the new button and going to your list of engines, you can select a second engine, and it'll play a whole bunch of games against itself, and so on and so on and so on. You can put a whole bunch of engines here if you wish. I'm going to just use Fritz 12 because I'm actually going to show this to you uh, during the course of this uh of this video, but use the new and delete buttons to add and remove engines from the list very much as we saw with um, the compare analysis feature we looked at a few videos back in Chess Base Workshop. Um, as I said, if you want to add a, a engine to the list, just click the new button, select it from the list, and select your hash table size and other parameters as you normally would. If you want to remove an engine from the list, you just click on it and click the delete button. This does not delete the engine from your hard drive. It just removes that engine from the list of shootout participants. You have a choice of different ways you can do the shootout. You can select blitz game, long game, which you're familiar with from the various time control settings in Fritz, or fixed depth. I like to use fixed depth. This is pretty cool the way you can see the results change from game to game. Move limit allows you to put a cap on the length of time or the number of moves that a, a game can last. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I just let it sit at nine nine nine. I mean, I you know, a game is not going to go that long. Longest chess game in history was about two hundred and eighty moves. So just leave that alone. You don't even have to fool with that if you don't want to, unless you have a reason for lowering it for some reason. Here's if you're going to use fixed depth. Here's where you set your controls for that. Um, you can set the first game will be played at a depth of three using the controls, which are the defaults here. It'll uh, each the engine will search to a three ply search depth. That's that's moving a half ahead before it makes a move. Then it'll switch sides to to black, and it will do a three ply search depth make a move, then it'll switch sides to white, etc. It's just going to play against itself. The first game will be at a depth of three plies. The last game will be at a depth of nine plies. Here's an important toggle. Skip even plies. We've talked about this before and I've written about it at length and, and very simply, chess engines are sometimes tactically blind at even ply search depths. For example, at a depth of let's say four, um, let's say it's white's turn to move. White moves, black moves, white moves, black moves, and if black on that fourth ply makes a move that contains a very serious threat, a mating threat, whatever, 
White may very well overlook it and go ahead and play that initial move that it was looking at, which may lead into a forced four-ply uh, uh, sequence of moves in which black will then have uh, a, an unavoidable mate or a uh, unavoidable tactical threat. That's what I mean by tactically blind. It's best to use odd number of plies when you have a chess engine play against itself. So I keep that checked. However, if you uncheck it, now look here, if we, we set the depth of 3 to 9, it means there are going to be four games played. The first game, the engine will play against itself at a three-ply search depth, then 5, then 7, then 9. For four games, if you uncheck that, it becomes seven games, 3 through 9. But I recommend that you check skip even plies. That way, you won't have that weird tactical blindness uh, thing that mars so many computer versus computer games at even ply search depths. So what's going to happen with these settings, with fixed depth and depth of 3 through 9, Fritz is going to play four games against itself. The first game it'll move after it's done a 3 ply search depth. In the second game it'll move each time after a 5 ply depth, then a 7, then a 9, and this doesn't take very long at all. And we'll show you what happens here. Uh, you click OK, and it's going to start playing games from that initial position. We'll move this out of the way a little bit, and you can see it flying through. It's already done the three ply game, now it's doing the five ply game. Now we're up to the seven ply game. And finally, the nine ply game, which will take a little bit longer. Just that quick, it's done. And we get a final result here, by the way, in this technical messages box. Um, Basically, there have been there's a white win, a black win, and two draws, so they split 50-50. Again, casting doubt on Marshall's assertion that this may be a uh, a one or a, a winning game for Black after that uh, that that 12 move sequence that we looked at. If we click close, we can actually play through the games if we wish. Uh, another thing that we might want to do. And notice here, you've got a whole bunch of moves that are not annotated by Fritz. This was our initial position. With each move, you get the uh, the search depth, which will always be a 9 for all, all the moves in this game, as well as an evaluation of each move, who's winning, who's losing. Uh, of course, you remember the positive numbers are uh, advantage to white. Negative numbers are an advantage to black. If we hit F12, go to the database, the game list, we will see that we have our four games here, our four shootout games, our Fritz 12 three-ply game, then a five-ply, seven-ply, nine-ply. Note that what this, uh, what the software does is it saves the games into a special shootout database. Um, you'll, when you installed the software, you were asked for a default folder for your databases and your books and that stuff, and the shootout database is in that folder, whatever you set up as the, as the default folder for this to be stored in. In fact, if you look at the, the bar here at the top, it says shootout.cbh. There are 14 games in it. I've just added four uh, based on Frank Marshall's Gioco Piano. Go back here. Notice, too, that it strips out Marshall's commentary except for this variation that was thrown in there, so you don't see Marshall's comments. But you do get uh, statistical information for each move and evaluation, the depth, the amount of time that the software spent looking at the move, and the reason for that is because if you decide to activate the evaluation profile, that separate pane, um, let me see if I can pull that up here, evaluation profile, it generates an evaluation profile for each game. If we go to the next game, we'll see that, we'll see all this change. So you go to the five-ply game, and you look here, it looks like uh, Black was winning the whole way through the game. Black did, in fact, win that game. Go to the previous game, the three-ply game, and it was a little more back and forth. Black had it all his way early on, and then White wound up doing far better. We jumped two games ahead, and it was a draw. Um, 
We'll see that Black actually was doing really, really well till very late in the game when suddenly the game became drawn. And here was a little more back and forth black than white than black. So maybe there is something to Marshall's comment that with 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 perfect play or or with uh, with good play, black should win in this position. Again, the Monte Carlo analysis that we did last week was kind of inconclusive. It seemed to be a fairly even split with a slight advantage to black. It seems to be borne out here as well. We had a black win, a white win. But the couple of draws looks like Black was doing very well through most of those games. So this is how the shootout can be used as a evaluation tool as well. You can just take an initial position in a game and have Fritz or any other engine play a series of games against itself. And in fact, if you do a whole bunch of these, if, if you line up a, a pile of engines and do a whole bunch of these uh, games, you could actually create a tree out of these later. By the way, if I was going to actually do some serious research on this position that we're starting with here when I went to shootout, I would actually set these depth values much higher. 3 through 9, that's very shallow. I would probably start with 9 and go up to 15 or 17 as my upper end before I would start the shootout function. As always, the deeper a uh, engine surges into a chess position, the longer it evaluates, the better evaluation you get. So 3 through 9 is very cursory. It's not very good. You'd go for a longer depth, but I wanted to be able to show you in this video how this feature works, which is why I went for a for shorter search depths. Well, that's it for Chess Base Workshop this week. Next time around, we'll have some more information on the Fritz 12 interface. Until then, have fun.